Crystal Palace v Birmingham City, May 1989. This match was played on the last day of the 88-89 season and has since been renamed the Relegation Party, as Birmingham City were already relegated to Division 3. Palace could still gain promotion if they won well and other results went their way, and so the scene was set for one of the most surreal events of the football hooligan era. There were several pitch invasions and the referee had to stop play to allow police horses onto the pitch to restore order. Due to YouTube terms of contract, we cannot show the violence that occurred in which there were 16 arrests and 25 injuries, one with a stab wound. Blues fan Tom told us, by the middle of April that season, Blues had been relegated for the first time in their history to the third division. The club was at its lowest ebb. St Andrews was in dire need of investment. Many of the players were YTS apprentices. Crowds at home had sunk to below the 5,000 mark and the club had no money. The Coombs family that had run the club for years decided to call it a day and ownership of the club transferred to the Kumar brothers. For weeks, the song had been sung at St Andrews and at away trips such as Portman Road, where again we lost, to join in the Blues relegation party. However, no one expected it to catch the imagination of so many Blues supporters. The day itself will be remembered with both joys and sorrows too. A police documentary about the day saw the police wondering why 150 Blues fans were on the car park of the Crystal Palace Leisure Centre at 11am in the morning. It also showed the police being told that around 2,500 Blues fans were expected for the game. In the event, around 9,000 Blues fans turned up for the game and those that had met up earlier at the Leisure Centre were determined to mark Birmingham City's relegation to the third division in an unsavoury way. Before the game kicked off, the, the scenes around and in the ground were truly amazing. On a bright sunshine day, every fancy dress costume that you could imagine was on display. Butchers, Rambos, Pirates, Supermen, Red Indians, Giant Pandas, Other Fury Animals, Cavaliers, Hitlers, Andy Pandys, Blues Brothers. Put it this way, you name it, they were there. What was even more amazing was the amount of people that were in fancy dress. It must have been around 75% of the Blues crowd. It was a truly carnival atmosphere. Blues fans were housed in part of the open terracing at one end of the ground and some seating at one side of the ground next to the terracing. The fans were packed into that terracing like sardines and it was verging on being dangerous. As kickoff approached, a lot of barracking was heard between the Blues fans in the seated area and the Palace fans around them. As soon as the game kicked off, the trouble began. The fans in the seated area now attacked the Palace fans around them. Another group were busily smashing down a door that connected the terracing to this seated stand and another group ran onto the pitch and up the touchline to attack the Palace fans from the pitch. It was like watching a military plan going into operation. I am sure to this day that this was planned. At this point, Palace scored, which prompted more Blues fans to go on the pitch. The connecting door was now gone, and more fans streamed into the Palace end. The teams were withdrawn from the field for their own safety. The genuine Blues fans chanted, You're the shit of Birmingham at the Troublemakers. The trouble continued for some time, and the game was held up for around 20 minutes, whilst peace was restored. A no-man's land was created in the seated stand that had terracing to the front and a number of Blues fans left the terracing for the comparative space of this stand. Now I'm not condoning violence but I believe looking back that these fans did the rest of us a favour. The terracing was so dangerously crowded you may have ended up with another Hillsborough on our hands. Only by creating space in the side stand by Palace fans moving to the other end to get away from the trouble gave the Blues fans an overspill area that relieved the crush on the terracing. Also, I have to say that some of the fighting was comical to watch. You had pirates on the pitch fighting Father Xmas raining blows, and then I remember someone saying the gorillas had it, as a blow was delivered to a guy in a gorilla costume, whilst a Hitler was directing the chaos. The game eventually restarted in a subdued atmosphere, 
and thankfully there did not appear to be any further outbursts of violence. Even though I heard since from Millwall supporters that some of them were leaving the den during their game to go down to Selhurst Park, Blues eventually lost again 4-1 with Simon Sturridge grabbing a consolation goal. Palace fan Simon told us, I was standing in the Arthur Wait enclosure as usual, and I remember being really worried for the first few minutes. This was a match that Palace could possibly have secured automatic promotion in, although it was a long shot, and the enclosure was packed. As some people have already mentioned, Hillsborough had only happened a few weeks earlier, and when the Brum fans started steaming onto the pitch and at the AW, there was a few minutes when it looked possible that there could be panic with lots of people trying to get out of the way. I probably would have if I was down that end. Fortunately, the AW stood their ground to repel the invaders. If the Birmingham assault had been more determined and they'd got into the enclosure in large numbers, there could easily have been a stampede with hundreds of Palace fans trying to get out of the way. Coming just after Hillsborough, another tragedy looked like a genuine possibility when it first started. It certainly scared the crap out of me when it started, and it was also one of the most surreal episodes I've ever witnessed, seeing all these blokes in fancy dress swedging on the pitch. Our thanks to Simon and Tom for their recollections of the day's events. Although there was much trouble, it's clear that Birmingham fans caused most of it and that the Palace fans were merely defending their territory and certainly cannot be classified of a taking of an end. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for notifications of future videos and to help our channel grow.